Hi, man, John Armstrong. Welcome to Back Office Teardown Lab. I have here an electronic kit of mystery, which I'm going to be assembling today. And I say it's an electronic kit of mystery because it not only comes, uh, well, didn't come with any instructions, um, it didn't come with really anything at all that really identifies what it could be. I mean, there's some writing on the PCB, but I'm not going to have a look. I think it's going to be more fun for us to try to figure it out. First things first, though, I've written down the resistor values I could see on the back of the PCB. I'm going to use this chart to try to work out these resistors. I'm not good at this, I have to admit. I prefer things with the values written on them. But I'm going to go through this, and we're going to work it out what they are. I've had to play. I've made my list. Frankly, I think this is wrong, so I'm not going to trust that. I'm going to put this to the side. We're just going to crack straight on with this kit. Let's open the bag of bits and bobs. So we've got a PCB. Maybe it's a bit clearer. Let's do it right on our pad. So our PCB, some ICs. A suspicious looking module. Perhaps this is a totally self contained thing. A speaker. This could be a sound making thing. A bunch of switches, some pin headers, and diodes. So, soldering irons on. Let's just jump straight in. There is an actual model number of this PCB ICSK 052A. So we'll start with the sort of transistory looking thing. That's going to be nice and easy. I'm going to start with an easy one just to sort of ease ourselves into it. Good, that's real nice. Now, some people have criticised me for not using flux in the past. I do have flux. Let's just see. You know, I'll use it if necessary, but I don't think we need it for all of these. That's taken that quite nicely. Get your side cutters in there. Let's trim this bad boy down. One pin at a time. You don't want to overload your side cutters and blunt them. Let me zoom in for you. Let's take a closer look at this thing. So two chip carriers to go in here. Speaker. These look like four switches, and indeed we appear to have four switches right there. That's good. 150k resistors, two diodes, our module, another diode, another couple of resistors. So all in all, it shouldn't be too much problems. So I'm just going to try to populate as much as I can in one hit. So that's our pin carrier. Another, not pin carrier, chip carrier is probably more accurate a term. I would suggest get those two in really on their own, but we could have a go with the speaker while we're at it. The pins for the speaker are actually ever so slightly too far apart, so that's going to be a tight squeeze. The speaker's going to want to hold itself in nearly at that rate. So I'm just holding it upside down just to show you I've got my fingers on the side. I'm going to hold it like that, squeezing it from the back so these pins are protruding bit of one-handed soldering now so what I'm going to do is just take the soldering iron and put one blob in one pin one corner pin of each or oh, there we go and the other offset pin if you can't get to the corners I'm just going to check it out the ICs are quite flat but this one's just not flat enough so I'm going to just heat up that tack joint and just squeeze it down. There we go, both are now sitting nice and flush. So I will uh, capitulate with those flux evangelists and I will just give a tiny little bit of flux if I can on my board. Just dumped a load of flux on there, that's more than enough flux. Most solder you're using actually has the flux integrated in it anyway, you won't need it. So don't freak out if you don't have any. Flux was a luxury when I were a lad. I do have a fan, I'm not going to turn it on though, but just if you're doing this, try not to let those fumes get into your eyes because it can be a little bit irritating. So that's one chip carrier in. This is 
quite exciting really and I'm, I'm pretty sure now looking at it it's some sort of sound making device popping and a sizzling away So I've been thinking about my solution for my not working, knowing, well, not being able to work out what these resistors are, and then even when I do work it out, not being sure of whether or not they really are worked out correctly. And I'll show you my little workaround. So that's all good. I just realized something. We got these two chips, but we don't really, we can only just about see what they are, so that's fine. We can get them in at the end. If uh, we couldn't read the number of what the chip was, we'd have to take those off. So if you're making a kit like this, be aware of that. So we've got a number of resistors here. What I'm gonna do, this is my little little old trick, is I'm gonna sort them out first into all their types. So we've got four kinds. So we've got uh, five of this kind, three of this kind, and then two each of these other two values. So all I have to do is look at the PCB and see where we've got five of anything. And we know that's the first lot. So five of anything. I see 150, 150, 150, 150, 150K. And these must be our 150Ks. So I'm just using some detective work to solve these. But uh, I'll show you how I'm going to figure out the last uh, few, which could be tricky because there's two lots of the same. In a moment. Let's just get these ones in for now. Slide that 150K in right there. Been a little bit awkward. Come on. There we go. These resistor legs are really thin. It's probably the thinnest resistors I've ever seen. Still, it saves material, saves weight, saves cost. Probably good for the planet. I can already tell though they're going to be awkward when I flip the PCB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tack solder them from the top. And this looks quite achievable because they've got very generous through hole uh, vias here. Look at them. So just using the same technique as I did before, I'm going to just put a blob of solder on the end of the soldering iron. My soldering iron is too hot by the way, if that's if you're curious as to why it's looking so filthy, and I'm going to turn that down actually right now. Let's let's, ha let's try it at 400 degrees. It was it was up at 500, and that's just going to cause the tip to oxidise instantly. Right, so all of those are tacked in. Be able to flip it over. I'm going to clean my tip now, soldering iron tip. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, let's get in there. So we should have 10 legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pretty quick soldering, even if I do say so myself. I'm just going to clip these, but I'm going to clip these off the bench because I don't want the uh, ends to go into my components. Snip, snip, snip. Nearly done. This is real time circuit construction. <laughs> yep, that's looking pretty good. Got ones floating a little bit high. Um, ah, go on. Let's fix it. Trim that little extra bit. So now we have three resistors that uh, should be the same. I see 270, 270, and a 620, and a. Hang on a minute. Hang on a cut and pick a minute. There's way too many resistors here. One, two, three, four. We only need four more on this P 
PCB, but we've got way more than four there. Hmm. Not to worry. We know we need a 620 resistor here. So let's see if we can use our multimeter to figure out which one is a 620. So let's try these ones. Point six megs, sixty one k, sixty one k. There we go. We do have a sixty two k, so that's that will be that will be that one. Two seventy. So this will be our six twenty. We'll pop that right in there. I believe this one's a 62. Again, let's you can double check quite easily. Have your meter on the ohms range. Pop that on there. This is an auto ranging one, which can be a, kind of annoying, but there you go. 60k. So this will be our one that drops into the 62 hole right here. I'm wondering why they give us all those extras. Have I missed missed something of this PCB? Am I going to suddenly find that I need a couple of extra ones? Or perhaps it's just easier for them to give you two than bother to try to pick out the individual ones. Right, so before I go any further, let's get those in. And I'm not going to do the tack from the top just because I want a bit of variety in my life. Ah, so close to my fingers. There we go. Oh, that was close. Done from the bottom. Perfect. So if this is a noise maker of dis some description, I'm really kind of curious as to what noises it will make because uh, it's an awful lot of switches. So six, sorry, 270K, these are the last of the resistors. Pop that in from the top. Some people like to have all their resistors lined in in a particular direction, you know, a bit arty, but uh, I used to take such care in my youth, but I've found over the years you don't really have to put a second glance on a PCP once you've made them, once, uh, once they're on the shelf gathering dust because you didn't bother putting it into a box, you're not going to worry whether those resistors are one way around or the other. They certainly don't. If you are going to worry about anything, though, worry about which way around your diodes are in. Otherwise, it ain't going to work for you at all. Diodes, where are we? We've got one, two, three diodes right here. I can see three diode holes. I'm just noticing as well, you know, we've got this mystery capacitor here mystery ceramic again don't know what that's for but I'm uh, I can see this PCB might have I don't know if we need to sort of augment this let's let's worry about that later so diodes uh, one big fat old diode I can see that goes into the oh, I threw it across the room there we go into our D3 slot here which is right up there can see on the PCB though it does mention a CK9561 which I think is that module which is the number on that audio module so if we get stuck we'll be able to look that up on the internet and hopefully there'll be a data sheet on it because we don't even know what the voltage of this PCB is it just says plus and minus I mean we can start it at three and take it from there Try not to crank it too high and blow something up. So diode two, and now just diode one. Now keep you can see on diodes that there's a marking that will correspond with the picture on the PCB. So on the PCB there'll be a, a white line, and on your diode you'll have a black line or a, a white line that, like on this one. Get them the right way around, or nothing will work. Am 
My soldering iron now is officially dead dirty. One, two, three, and four. The last of the diodes. So we've got our switches. Are the switches directional? They certainly don't appear to be. So let's just bung them in. They look like they're gonna have quite a tight interference fit, which is good for us. I noticed on the end as well, you see there's a, a pin header that goes on this, which has four settings. Ground, D, C, B and A, or A, B, C and D, depending which direction you're reading it off. suggest perhaps some sort of external control so maybe this is something that would live in a toy Arrgh, come on come on last one there we go there we go now ah, they are directional actually there is a marking on these switches so I've got two one way around and two the other way around so I've got an option here either I have them if they are directional which I'm pretty sure they're not they would all be 50% wrong. Or what I'm going to do, just to be thorough, I'm going to turn them all around so that they're either 100% wrong or 100% right. There we go. Look at that. All in there. These are going to be a bit easier to solder because they kind of jam themselves in. And you don't need to cut the legs when you're done. A bit of solder stuck there to the leg. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whew, nine, ten. 11, 12 pins. That's it, that's all the pins for the switches. Yeah, they all move, good. So we've got this module, it's a single-sided module. These two tabs here on the PCB are just attached to the ground plane, so this can probably only go in one way and I was to hazard a guess I'd say it could go in that way and we're going to turn it through 90 degrees and put it into this slot so looking at it now I'm going to kind of wish that I soldered this in before I put all of these in so I'm going to have to just get in there now um, and actually pushing the PCB this all the way down is no, not good oh you can do it from underneath ah it's double sided Yeah, you know what? Don't do it from underneath though, because these tracks here, uh, I, I think they're just isolated pads. They're not the the actual tracking is from the top. These are all just floating pads here. So if you actually sold them on underneath, you're going to be stuffed. Do it from the top. So I'm just going to do an alignment. So what I'm going to do is glue the first. I'm going to glue. Glue, glue the first one. I'm going to solder the first one in and just pull the PCB up a little bit till it's just where I want it. Okay, and I'll show you why I do that. If you see in here, there's a very small gap. I don't want this inner PCB. It's milling's not accurate enough. If it floated all the way through to the bottom, it wouldn't align on the top. You can probably just about get in there and see that it's about right on the alignment. If anything, there's a tricky bit there because I'm just looking at this pin here. It doesn't even have a pad, a full pad like the other ones. In fact, I think I'm going to shimmy the board across just a touch because this one looks like it could bridge these two if I'm not careful. Let 
let's have a look it's not ideal but it's a lot better about as good as you're going to get actually at this point one last check on the bottom make sure it's nice and horizontal let's get in there right, let's put this on here you can see now it's a bit starting to get a bit turning into some close work here to take your care when you get to this point because it's going to be very hard to get in there afterwards incredibly difficult to get in behind this speaker but I do it because my kung fu is powerful yeah baby Now we do have two more to do, and one of those is the one that's going to be really weird. It's this one here, again let me show you, that doesn't appear to have a pad. So I'm going to solder it anyway. That might just be a floating pad for all I know, it might not even be needed, but I think I can do it. I can get away with it, so I will. Look at that. Those are the skills that pay the bills. No idea though what this bit is. Perhaps one of our capacitors or something will go in there. So, we're almost ready really to try, um, try it out. We've got this pin header too. They've given us a pin header, but it's four pins. And there's five pins on here, so that's not really much use to us. We're going to just go straight ahead, really, and solder some power on. I'm going to solder the power on, and I'm going to pop the chips in. I'm going to do that in that order because no good reason why. So I'm just stripping down some wire on this from my power supply. And yeah, you can tell it's absolutely ridiculously big. I'm pretty sure we don't need that many amps of power, so I'm going to just trim these off. So we've just got a couple of little strands. So what do you do if you've got a bench power supply like I do? Um, you've got lots of ways of using it in practice, and how I end up using it is I seem to have a very long, thick gauge wire on it as long and as thick as I'm ever likely to want and then I uh, solder it to things test them and then just cut it and then every time every time I need to uh, do another thing I have to just clean and trim and solder on another piece right we're ready to go so we'll just trim this down we don't, don't need really hardly any wire it's very short so I'm just going to tin the negative, tin the positive, and then solder our positive wire, let's attack it from this angle. I think I've worked out what the A, B, C, D might be, it might be triggers. So I think maybe those switches, all the different switches might act as like dip switches for the different settings. And then A might be play once, play twice, play three times, something like that. I'm probably wrong on that, but that would be my nearest guess. So we've got our two ICs, Texas Instruments, CD466 and a weird thing, CD4011. Just going to see which one. The 4011 is the one on the bottom. I'm going to try to not destroy the IC putting it in. An integrated circuit for those of you who don't know what IC means or a chip an integrated chip that'll do right the moment of truth power so I'm giving it one two three volts four volts we'll stop at five so that's five volts now 
So far, no sounds. I'm just going to use one of these resistors. Between nothing. According to my bench power supply, there is no current being drawn either. So I'll just get my tweezers. So the circuit may well be, may well be, that is even English. I do believe we're going to have to get the data sheet on this module. Unless we can figure out if these resistors... I'm just going to try one last thing as well. We can see on the module there is a track that looks... Did you hear that? Hmm, it's squeaking, it's squeaking and squawking. I don't know if it's... This is probably for its timing circuit actually. Maybe it could be a ceramic cap. Very interesting sound, isn't it? You can hear it hitting off the. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. That wait, that may well be its oscillator. I think I'm going to have to resort to a data sheet, guys. Ah, hang on. Did that sound a bit more lively? Okay. I think I'm going to have to resort to a data sheet, guys. I'll be back in just a moment. And there we have it. So for this module, it's this module is a CK9561. So this is actually the circuit here. So we need a 240K resistor to be soldered in there. So let's see what resistors we have. And I know I've dropped one on the floor. So hopefully the one we dropped on the floor isn't the one we need. 200 oh it says it says actually 100k to 390k so it's a range i'm not sure if that uh, controls the speed or the uh, something or another it's a really simple circuit right so that's a 200k so that's perfect uh yeah just looking at the circuit board it uh sorry the actual circuit diagram it's really simple it's using a sort of 9104 transistor really just to sort of pull down a speaker so it's very simple now this uh, resistor actually goes in from this side because the pads are on the other side stay I think this resistor actually controls the speed it might control the pitch that's one leg done Second leg done. Let's try again.
More debugging needed. I'm back guys, I know it spoiled the real-time nature, but uh, yeah, I couldn't debug this. I've been pulling all the chips out, everything, really messing with it. Um, I managed to find a circuit diagram. I think all of these chips here, they're just to do with selecting the different inputs would make different sounds, and it's a sound module. But this is the real critical thing. This module's a standard module, but there's a, actually a bodge capacitor on here. So I'm gonna try putting the bodge capacitor on before I go any further, because that's why there was a capacitor in the box. You'd never figure that out in a million years where to put that. So I'm going to put that on now and let's see what happens. In fact, I'm going to do it live while it's making sound so we can see if it actually makes a difference. So, current level of sound as you can hear it. I'm going in. In fact, let's trim this down right now. Are you ready for the moment of truth? Wow, it's a police siren. Should we put the chips back in? Machine gun. Right, enough of that noise. Um, yeah, can't figure out what Switch 1 and Switch 2 are doing right now. I'll have to have a look-see at this actual kit. It's a kit available on the internet. If you want to buy this kit, it's an ICSK052A. It did need that bodge capacitor. That's the only bit. There was no instructions with it, but I'm sure you can find instructions online if we actually dig deep enough. I think that... Uh, these switches obviously are designed to sort of multiplex different things and to make different sounds, and they're accompanied by these pin headers too. I mean, we could just have one last go on switch one and switch two. No. Definitely not sure what they're up to. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope that's been of some education to you and uh, you feel brave enough to make one of these kits. Please feel free to leave a comment down below in the description. I know it's a long video, by the way, before anybody comments. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's purposefully long so you can follow along and learn how to solder. Please feel free to click subscribe for more videos and be updated when I produce new videos. And as ever, thank you for watching.